Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah. Today I want to talk with you a little bit about um, like Nazi things, like how we learned in Germany. That's like the first big topic I want to talk with you about. And the second thing is um, about the um, Nuremberg pro processes, like what we just learned about, like how these Allied powers judged our um, Nazi leaders. Then um, about right extremism in Germany and if it's still there and what is like big things there. And then at least I want to talk with you a little bit about this whole stuff, like what is in the moment going on. And I want just to give you some ideas what I think about it. We will come to this later. Um, today I want to start a little bit about this um, NS time. So I won't, won't say Nazi time or something. I will always say NS, National Socialism time, and um, how we learn about it in Germany. And um, usually we learn a lot about it. It's like a really big and huge deal in Germany. You can imagine, like, it's still alive here in the U.S. And then this country where it came from, it's like also like really big. So um, I think it's not really a big surprise that we learn a lot about it. Um, like Germany is really liberal. It's a liberal country, and um, we have a lot of stuff about like um, environmental protection and everything. Like what is what is like in the moment really, ex uh, really really important. But we learn. Oh, sorry, <laughs> we learn more about. Nazi time and S and S time than about envi environmental protection and other stuff. Um, usually, every time if you learn about this stuff, Germany is the worst guy you can imagine. Like think of of a devil and take it times to the fifth power and worse, and it's like Germany is always like the worst thing ever, and especially like this thing what like this book from Hitler, Mein Kampf. Um, you're not allowed to have it in Germany. You can own it, like in private property, but you cannot teach it. You cannot um, take stuff out of it and like m give it to persons or like um, say yeah, that what, what that was was what Hitler think about it. It would be a crime in Germany, and you could punish get or your punishment can up to five years in prison. So it was really a big deal. Um, just last year in June of 2015. They allowed this book in Germany, like also in public schools. Mm. Before that, it was never allowed. And um, in Germany, we learn also like a lot of anti-German stuff. Like where I came here, like everything, even if it's like a bad thing from the um, what US US did, um, you don't learn about like really bad. Like usually, it's more like objective and. Or it's try to be objective, but in Germany, like everything with Nazi, they are the worst, they are bad, and we never get like the view from a Nazi person, and it's like really different from here. And also, like <laughs> we just did in um, uh, world history, like NS propaganda, or especially like also before the World War One, we had to draw like um, yeah propaganda for Germany, and I was like, wow. Um, it's not possible in Germany. We never did something like that. We looked at it, yeah, but to make like your own one to think about it, no, that's not possible in Germany. <laughs> and um, then what we also do, like what every student in Germany have to do, it's like um, visit a concentration camp. And I went to the to different concentration camps. Um, I went to Neuen Gamme. It's in near of Hamburg. And then it, it's um, close to me. It's called um, Buchenwald. That's also what like what's in TCI in our textbook. And um, I just want to talk about that a little bit because it was like really, yeah. You go there and it's like um, the city where it's, like the next city is um, Wismar, uh, Weimar, and it's like a really nice city. It's um, awesome there. It's like um, like a big German, po um, yeah. Person like it's like it's like the German um, Shakespeare. He is he's come from there, and there's like um, stat statues and everything and memorials for him. And um, it's like a really big, yeah, artist city. It's like a wonderful city. Then you go to this hill, and um, you only thing you see is like a big tower, nothing else. Then you go up there, and it's like a long road. And you go, you come there, and you just see like a big. 
yeah, I don't know how I ex should explain it. It looks like a really old-fashioned train station because it was there where these um, trains arrived and all these Jews and other don't want it, or these other persons who don't, the Nazi government don't want it there. They send it to these concentration camps and you go in there and it's like a huge free space place and there's like, you can see really nothing because all these wooden um, houses are like all and they fall to, together or after the world war um, they needed these wood and everything to build their own cities and um, yeah, so these, all these um, houses or like these houses where they live and it's not anymore there and um, then you go over this place and um, there's just a big, well, in front there's all these um, SS houses where these SS officers lived and everything, but that's like everything. And then you go in there and there's like one, it's a long, it's a long building. It looks like a hallway usually, and um, it's like one big room with, um, with speakers where they make like music, and um, all these persons came, came in there and they had to wait in there. And because a doctor looked at them, then they had to go to a middle room where there was like this doctor, like and usually it was just an SS officer with completely no experience in medical stuff. Then he looked at these persons, okay, yeah, you look fine or something. And then, yeah, okay, please go to the next room. We have to um, take your measurement, like how high you are and how much you weighed. And then um, doing, they had to stand on the wall and then they try, looked, okay, how um, tall you are. And behind this thing, there was like an SS man with a gun, and um, then he shoots you in the neck, like during your stay there. Um, and then they had like like an apartment behind, and they opened it, and then they just shoot your neck, and you were like immediately dead. And they did that like the whole day over. And the next building was a um, thing where they burned all these dead bodies, and also like where these um, doctors like make experiments on these persons. It's still there, and it was like the worst room I ever saw. We came in there, and the whole walls are like yellow, like an old yellow light brown color. It's really weird. And then you go in there, and then you have like this table with scratches on it, and it's like the original table, and you just can imagine what they did there. and. It was hard. That was like the hardest thing I had in this concentration camp. But yeah. Now I want to talk a little bit about this process in Nuremberg. What I know about it and what we learned a little bit, it's like it's a shine process. It's not a real actual fair process. Because like doing this process and the court process and everything, um, at the same time, they made our constitution, or like in, it's called basic law in Germany. And um, they wrote in these basic laws, there are like 50 articles in it, called paragraphs. And the uh, um, 30 second paragraph um, is nullum crimen, nulla poena sine lege. And that means as much like um, without a crime, um, it's, uh, it's no crime and no penalty without a law. And at the same time, these same person who um, are in this, um, yeah, in this room who write our constitution um, from the same country, they have like a court, go, uh, a court process going on where they have like this Nazi uh, persons who get charged for something that wasn't a law before. And I'm, I don't want to say that they don't have to get punished. Um, I'm the first person who would say, okay, shoot it, shoot them. But you cannot s say, shoot them like that. Be or say, or is it, well, because usually, uh, yeah, so we, we gave them a process, we gave them a trial, they had a lawyer and everything, but usually all these laws, these laws they made, they was made for this person who were there. And that's nothing what's like a good thing to do, in my opinion. So we learned that it's like you shouldn't take them just out and shoot them like Winston Churchill said, but this process was was a shine process. It was like it wasn't like a really process you really should watch or what is like really fair. 
and um, yeah, so that's like everything for the process in Nuremberg, and um, yeah, then how it is like Nazis in Germany today. <laughs> there are Nazis. There are Nazis in the U.S. But in Germany, you're much faster a Nazi. Um, we have like <laughs> maybe it's pressy. We have still a Nazi party. It's called the NPD, and um, yeah, the original Nazi party was NSDAP. So even the name is really um, yeah close together. Like this long name is um, Nationalistic um, Party of Germany, and the NSDAP was a Nationalism Socialist. Um, party of German workers. So it's really not the big difference, it's just other words for the same stuff. And they, we tried to um, say, okay, you're illegal now, but they failed. Because to say, okay, a party is not illegal, or it's no illegal, it's, it's a hard thing to do. There's um, the KPD, it's like, it's like a left party, like the Communist Party of Germany. They get prohibited in 1948 or 52, I'm not sure, like um, after or during um, the BRD, like Germany gets founded, they get prohibited because they wanted to go against the German constitution, and it's, a, it's against the law in Germany, <laughs> um, so they get prohibited. And um, in the moment, we have like this problem in Germany, you Nazi, if you, say, or if I say, hey, Germany is awesome, I like Germany, then some person would look at you, hey Tim, you're a Nazi. And I say, or I think then, hey, I just say I like my country. Everyone else can do it. There are like persons in um, Italy, they can do it. In France, they can do it. And in the US especially, they can do it. They say it here like everyone says, like, okay, America, awesome, America. So it's really not that uh, in Germany. Um, and all these left persons, like um, punks and everything, they try to yeah, punch you really in the right corner. That's like how, how we say it, you get punched in the right corner because um, everything you say, then they say, yeah, because you're a Nazi. So it's, um, in my opinion, it's really bad in Germany because not everyone is a Nazi there, but um, if you listen to some person, then they would say, yeah, the half of the persons are Nazis. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big problem in Germany, I think. Um, because it's also like, that's what I also want to say here, patriotism isn't bad. I think if you say, okay, I like my country, and you have a reason why you like it, you should be the last person who say, okay, I cannot say it like in front of, in front of other persons. Because it's your opinion, and if you have like a reason behind it, then it's nothing bad, and everyone should be proud of this country. Even on the history, like um, I like the German history, and it's not because there's like Hitler or something, but we had like the onlyest blood-free revolution in the human history. Like after the DDR, like um, the um, East Germany was um, yeah, falling apart. Um, it's the onlyest revolution without any that person. And this is like something what I'm really proud of. And um, I really love this part of history. Mm, but what I want to say you here, if sometimes what you say here, that's not any more patriotism. You're a nationalist. And um, if I hear like, okay, 100,000 Japanese life, I wouldn't tweet these against one American life. It's, you say that you're uh, 100,000 times better than Japanese, but you're also human, and they're human. And the only different, because they're not America or you're not Japanese, it's because you were born. And to get born is not a big accomplishment on your side. It's um, you did nothing for it. So don't be proud of your your country because you're born in there. Origin is no nothing to be proud of completely. You cannot say, yeah, I am good because I am born here, and yeah, everything else sucks. You cannot do that completely. And um, that's also what I, what it's, um, if Trump, Donald Trump, is saying this like all the time, like, um, yeah, we have to build a wall in Mexico because we don't like Mexicans, and um, Mexican ha or the Mexican government have to pay for this wall, 
and <laughs> I just stay there and think, why are you better than them? Uh, if you were born, if you were born like in Mexico, uh, with your same parents, um, where's the difference? Because there's nothing. Else. You just, um, yeah, it's nothing. It's not. Doesn't matter where you get born, because if you say just because you're born here, you're awesome, then every um, Im um, from all illegal immigrants here, the kids, then they have how you should uh, how you say it. They should be awesome too. You know what I mean? Like, if they come here and they get born here on U.S. ground, that's the same stuff what your parents did. And um, you say, yeah, they are, we are awesome because of that. And so these Mexican immigrants, or well, these kids of the Mexican immigrants, these anchor kids, then they're like also as good as you, what you're saying. But you say, no, they are suck. I don't like them. And that's something what I really, really, really don't like. <laughs> And um, yeah, he's like also like really Eurocentric. Um, he's like U.S. U.S.A. Yeah, and U.S.A. U.S. U.S. is in the middle point of the whole world, and that's not even possible. You cannot say okay, we just build walls around our country, and yeah, we only want to use like U.S. oil. We don't want um, oil from Iraq and everything. And why you get to Iraq because you wanted oil? That's something what I don't understand, but. Um, yeah, and it's a global world. It's a it's a process. Everything gets global, and nothing stays small. And um, you have to start to um, like your country. Have to start to be like not so egocentric. You have to work with other countries together because you cannot um, say yeah we can do it alone. You cannot be the world police who goes in there. You have to work together with the government, with the countries to accomplish anything in this world. And, um, yeah, and uh, the idea to get all your soldiers out of these, out of Iraq, Afghanistan, and everything, because you say, okay, um, it's not our war we fight there, so we go, or we send our troops back because we don't want that they die. Um, and we want to have them back in the US. It's, it's a nice idea, but you went in there and if you go in there, then you have to um, stay in there until you did it right. And I don't talk just about the invasion in 2002. I mean, like, in 1950, you went in there and destabilized, destabilized the countries down there. And we had a Democrat down there, Mohammed Mogadishu. But you went in there and yeah, destabilized the country, and he gets, yeah, um, he is not anymore in charge and then the dictator takes over and you lose control over it and it ends in Al-Qaeda, 9-11, um, Saddam Hussein, um, Obama, uh, Osama, <laughs> not Obama. And um, you cannot take off all your soldiers there because you send them in there. You, I don't want to say you messed up, but kind of the US messed up in these times. No, we have to stay in there and make and try to make it good, because if you go out there or in a the moment, um, then ISIS will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's not a war you can fight like a conventional war because the attitude of these ISIS fighters are like completely different, but you still have to be in there and have to help these persons and people in there, and that means like in first thing take refugees. And refugees, they're like more in war with ISIS than everyone you are here. How many ISIS members you saw? Or how big is your, um, your dangerous of life if you live in Big Piney, Marlin, uh, Big Piney, Wyoming? I think that's the last place where ISIS would go. So you don't have anything against ISIS, or ISIS won't be coming to here and attack you. You should take refugees. And if I hear, oh my God, there are like a, a 10,000 refugees who go, should go to the um, U.S. ground, that's nothing. To get to, look at Turkey, they have 2 million um, refugees and 60 million um, <laughs> persons living there. Or in Libyan, they have 1 million refugees 
about only uh, one million persons who live there. In Germany, now we have one million refugees. And in all these countries, how many terrorist attacks we had? Zero. And also French. They say, oh, yeah, okay, French. They, they went to Pirate, uh, Paris and they attacked it. No, they don't. It was French citizens. And if they want to come and want to attack you, they get it. And all these refugees, they hate ISIS more than all of you together. Because they killed the families, they raped their kids, and they killed all of the friends they had. And what they, what they did to, do to you? Nothing. To you personally. Okay, maybe they don't like the country, they burn flags. It's something that you really don't like, <laughs> I understand that, but it's still nothing to com what you can compare to the things that happened in, um, in Syria. And, uh, and Syria. So please don't say refugees will bomb us, they will kill us because they're like on ISIS side. No, they don't. They hate ISIS more than all of you. And what I also heard, that we don't take care about our um, veterans. And um, it's kind of, you should take care of veterans, that's for sure. They did a lot for your country, and um, but everyone, every single refugee, his life was worse and more bad than every veteran. Because the veterans know their families are in the U.S., they are safe, they are nice, uh, they have a home, and this person who lives there, or maybe just the parts of families, they don't, they don't have the money to go or to go away from the from Syria, and. They stay in Syria, and or, or they go out of Syria, and they know their family is there, and helps these persons, helps these people who come here and wants help, because they had a much worse life than you, all, and also that you, than your veterans, and yeah, you cannot. It's. I have really no understanding for that if you say, yeah, veterans are more important than refugees. Because re refugees are the civilians. Every veteran, he chose to go to the military. He wanted to go there. He wanted to fight for his country. It was his own choice. A refugee, he gets born there. He has no choice. It's, it's not his accomplishment. It's not his fault either. If you get born in, in uh, Syria, it's not your fault. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's bad luck. It's everything it is. And so help them stand up for refugee rights and take them to you and help them. Because they have a worse life than every one of you.